So whenever we have a quadratic or anything degree 2, we have to make sure that we have it always equal to 0 before we solve. Correct? That's the biggest rule. If we don't have it equal to 0, we can't solve it. Now we're always going to check and see if we can factor, which we can for both of these. If we can't factor, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which we're learning today. Yay! So, we always check for factoring. So is there something that multiplies to give me negative 12 and adds to give me 4? Yes. What is it? 6 and negative 2. Now I have to do decomp because there is a 4 in front, right? So I get 4x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Now I told you the hardest part of this lesson is grade 10 factoring. If you can't do grade 10 factoring, you can't do this, right? The grade 11 part of this is really easy. You set the two factors equal to 0 and solve for them. That's the easy part, the grade 11 part. The grade 10 part is the hardest part, the factoring. So if you can't factor, you need to admit it. You need to come to me and be like, Lep, last year, factoring. Me factoring, we not friends. And then we learn it, and we find, right? First step is denial. We want to get past that. We want to get to acceptance, and then just tell me, and then we fix the problem real quick. Okay, so we group. We put a plus sign in between. We can take out a 2 and an x, and we're left with x plus 3. 2x plus 3, that's totally a 2. And then we minus 1, and we get 2x plus 3. And then our factors are 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. Everything I have done so far is grade 10, right? That's all grade 10. Now in grade 11, all we do is we take both of them, set them equal to 0, and solve them. That's it. Okay? So this really is grade 10 outcome, almost. So we do 2x plus 3 equals 0. 2x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3 divided by 2. So we get negative 3 over 2 and 0 as one of them. And then we do 2x minus 1 equals 0, add 1, 2x equals 1, divide by 2, x equals a half. And then we get 1 half and 0 as my other one. Now, remember I said we can type them into our calculator, right? And we should have because I said here to check to verify graphically. So in your y equals, you'd put 4x squared plus 4x minus 3, and then you go second, trace, what? Zeros, which is number 2. Left bound, right bound, enter, and you'll get negative 3 over 2, then you do it again. Second, trace, number 2, which is zeros. Left bound, right bound, enter, and you should get 0.5. Okay? We're going to check again with our calculator today when we do quadratic formula. What's the problem with B? Not zero. Not equal to zero. So we have to first subtract the 16. So we get x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals zero. And we say what times what equals negative 16. What plus what equals negative 6. And it's going to be negative 8 and... And I can go right to brackets, x minus 8, x plus 2. And why can I go right to brackets? Because it's product sum, because there is a positive 1 in front. If there was a negative 1 in front, you'd either have to move everything to the other side to make it be a positive 1, or you'd have to do decomp. So the only time you can go straight to brackets is if there's a positive 1. If there's a negative 1, you can't. Then I, that's grade 10. Then I solve. x minus 8 equals 0, add 8. x equals 8. And then x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2, x equals negative 2. And then my x-intercepts are at 8, 0, negative 2, 0. So when it asks to solve, this is solving, this right here. Solve is telling you what the variable equals. So if I ask for solving, you'd be done there. If I ask for x-intercepts, you have to do this. Roots. Zeros all mean the same thing. So this here is solving. If I ask you to solve, you'd stop there. If I ask for x intercepts or roots, you'd go to here.
the next table is basically last unit, correct? Because we're not leaving go of stuff. We're going to put some sequences in the series also coming up in our daily quizzes because it's to not let go of your material, right? So the direction of the opening. This one is concave down because it's negative, right? And this one is concave up. Both of these are in vertex form because they are in the form that you can get your vertex directly from. Can you get your y-intercept directly from vertex form? For those of you who told me the back number is your y-intercept. You can't. You can only get y-intercept when it's in standard form, which means no brackets. So if I gave you like y equals x squared plus 3x plus 2, this would be my y-intercept, right? But this is not my y-intercept. That's my y of my vertex. Please don't tell me that's my y-intercept. You guys are doing that. So what's the vertex? Opposite of this, same as this. So this one's at 1, 8. Opposite of this, same as this. This one's at negative 3, negative 12. This one's concave down, and the highest it goes to is 8, or less. This one is concave up, and the lowest it goes to is negative 12, or more, which is helpful for us, for the rest. So, does this graph, the first one, have a max or a min? Concave down. What does it have? Maximum. When y equals what? 8. It's the y of the vertex, right? It's the highest point. This one is a minimum. When y equals negative 12. Equation of the axis of symmetry. If you have your vertex, your equation of your axis of symmetry is easy. It's the x of the vertex. So this one's going to be x equals 1. This one's going to be x equals negative 3. What's my range? Well, this one, the highest it goes to is 8, and then less, because the arrows are going down. So it's going to be y such that y is less than or equal to 8, y, e, r. And then this one is greater than or equal to, because arrows are up, negative 12. Y such that Y is greater than or equal to negative 12. Y you know. The domain of every quadratic is, X is an element of the reals, unless it's a word problem, which this is not. X such that X is an element of the reals. Now for here, I wanted you to find the y-intercept. Y-intercept means what? X equals zero every single time, correct? That's what should pop into your head. So my equation is negative 2 0 minus 1 squared plus 8, because x is 0. So I'm going to get y equals negative 2. This negative 1 squared is 1 plus 8. So y equals negative 2 plus 6. So what? No, oh, plus 8. I got to get ahead of myself. So y equals 6. So it's going to be at 0 and 6. The next one is y equals 1 third x plus 3, so 0 plus 3 squared minus 12. y equals 1 third. 3 squared is 9 minus 12. A third of 9 is 3 minus 12, which equals negative 9. So it can be 0 and negative 9. Now, if I put it into standard form, it should verify, shouldn't it? I should get a 6 as my back number on this one, and I should get a negative 9 as my back number on the other one if I'm putting it into standard form. Standard form means no brackets, correct? Now, can I always check standard form? Yes. I can type the vertex form in your y1. I can type the standard form in your y2 with a thicker line, and it should draw on top of each other, shouldn't it? It should be the same graph, shouldn't it? 
So you're going to check that out after. So I have y equals negative 2 x minus 1 squared plus 8. My first step is to rewrite out the x minus 1 twice. My next step is to FOIL it. So I get negative 2 bracket x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 plus 8. Such as FOILing. First, outer, inner, last. Then I collect like terms in here. So I go y equals negative 2 x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x plus 1 plus 8. And then I have to distribute my negative 2 through. So I get y equals negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 2 plus 8. And I get negative 2x squared plus 4x. Then these two go together plus 6. Ah! Both of y-intercepts of 6, correct? So I want you to go to your calculator. In y1, you're going to put in negative 2, x minus 1 squared plus 8. And in y2, you're going to put in negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. If you have the colored calculators, you're fine. If you have not the cal colored calculators, you want to go over here and make this be a thicker line. Because you want to physically see it draw over top of the other one. If you leave it the same line, you can't see it redraw. So in Y1, type in your original. In Y2, type in your new one. Go. Everyone should be trying it. Y1, Y2. In form of the other one. So we have Y equals 1 third X plus 3 squared minus 12. My first step is to rewrite the X plus 3 twice. Then foil it x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 times 12. I'll distribute the third in. Oh, ignore that. I'm going to click like terms first. So I get y equals 1 third x squared plus 6x plus 9. And distribute y equals one third x squared. Six times one third is two x. Nine times one third is plus three minus twelve. Y equals one third x squared plus two x minus nine. This is a good sign, right? But how do we know for sure we're right? You type the original, type the new one in, and it should give you the same graph, right? Whenever I ask you to go from standard to vertex form or vertex to standard, you should be able to walk away from the test knowing you should be happy or sad. Because it should match or they shouldn't, right? One or the other. Okay, I'm going to get you guys to flip to your notes. To this page, which is page 21. So... We went through some of these already. We're going to go through just a little reminder because we did a whole lesson on these at the very beginning of the year, just to remind you. But we're remembering how to reduce. Now, to reduce a radical, which we're going to have to do in order to do the quadratic formula, remember we had that little chart, and I'll write it over here on my board. Remember you had the chart of squares? Yeah. Of perfect squares? So you'd have the number one, and it's x and then x squared would be 1 and then 2 would be 4 and 3 would be 9, 4 would be 16, 5 is 25, 6 is 36, 7 is 49, 8 is 64, 9 is 81, 10 is 100, then we got 11 of 121, 12 of 144, 13 was 169, 14 was 189, I believe. Sorry, I'm guessing on that one. I thought it was 196. Yep. 
15 is 225. I think we've gotten larger now. 16 is 2. Mm -hmm. We're getting that having to stop. Okay. So, we need to break these into something that falls in the right-handed column. Okay? So is there any number in the right-handed column, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, any of those that 8 can break into? Yeah, 2 and 4. So I'm going to write the perfect square first. So this equals, remember I put equal signs? 4 times 2. And the reason why we use perfect squares is when they come out, they become the number on the left. So the square root of 4 is actually 2. So it comes out as a 2. And then my answer is 2 root 2. This is mixed radicals from grade 10. 18. What does it break down into? 9 and 2. When the 9 comes out, it becomes a 3. So we get 3 root 2. What about 32? 16 and? 16 and 2. 16 comes out and it's a? 4. So you get 4 root 2. And you try and take the biggest one out, right? If you don't take the biggest one out, let's try that. So 200, I know. I don't know what happened there. 200, I know, can break down into 4 and what? Nope. 4 and 50. 50. So I can break down 200 as to 4 and 50. Yes, you might say, well, 25 is bigger and it works. Yes, it does. But I'm just proving a point if you don't pick the biggest one that it still works. Okay? So if I take the 4 out, it becomes a 2. So now I have 2 root 50. But then I say, wait a second. 50 can break down. What can I break it down into? Yeah, 25 and 2. And then the 25 comes out and it's a 5. What happens to these two numbers? They multiply. So I actually end up with 10 root 2. So what could we have spotted right off the hop? What could have been our biggest number we could have put in here? 100. So we could have broke 200 actually into 100 times 2. The 100 comes out and it becomes a 10. And we'd have 10 root 2. Same answer, just a few less steps. Do I care which root you go about getting 10 root 2? Nope. I care that you get 10 root 2. So you remember that? Okay, we're in a quadratic formula. Next page. We're actually going to skip ahead too because I don't care about that. This is your quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula has to be used if you can't factor. Okay? So if you go to solve like I've given you in the past or ask you to find x-intercepts and you literally can't go what times what equals what, what plus what equals what, and nothing works. Right? So if I went like what times what equals 12, what plus what equals 3. There's nothing that I can multiply to get me 12 that will get me 3. Right? Add to get me 3. There's nothing. So I can't factor it. If I can't factor, I have to use quadratic formula. Now, quadratic formula actually always works, even if you can factor. But factoring doesn't always work. Now, how do we use quadratic formula? So the quadratic formula written as one fraction, whenever you have this, you have to have it in this form. You have to have a quadratic equal to what? Zero. Didn't we have to have it equal to zero to solve it anyways? Yeah. So... In order to solve any quadratic, anything with a square, you have to have it equal to zero. Okay? Now, the other thing to note is it's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, which is written above. But what it's to note here is what's in front of the x squared is always your a. What's in front of your x is always your b. And what's at the back by itself is always your c. And you take the sign with it. She's paying no attention to. So if the sign is negative 3, if the sign is negative 3 in front, you have to take the negative 3 with it. 
the negative sign with the 3. Okay? So it's what sine goes in front. Now this is the formula, and you might be like, well, this is awful. That's fine, but it's given to you, which could be worse. You could have to memorize it if you don't have to. Like I told you, if you don't believe me, it's important. It's on the 30-1 formula sheet. It's also on the 30-2. So if you thought you were escaping it, you are not. It was on both. You are what? Plus you not. All right. So the formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that entire numerator, whole thing, over 2a. So it's the whole numerator over 2a. So you guys will try and like split it halfway. You can't. It's that whole top over a whole bottom. It's a whole fraction. Okay? So here it says, use the following to find the solution of this algebraically. I can't use that formula unless it's equal to zero. Is this equal to zero? Yeah. Yes. First check, done. It's not equal to zero. I have to get it equal to zero before I can use it. Okay? Now, what's in front of my x squared is a. What's in front of my x squared if there's nothing there? A one. Some people will say zero. If it was a zero, zero times x squared would be zero. It wouldn't exist, right? So, my a equals positive one. Now, whatever is in front of my x is my b. So, what is my b? Negative six. And then whatever is the constant at the back is my c, which is negative ten. Do you see how there's no brackets or anything in this equation? It's just in standard form, and in standard form I have an A, a B, and a C. Okay? Now we're just going to fill it into the formula. Are you prepared? It looks worse than it is. It really isn't bad. I promise you. I don't lie. So, we're going to go X equals, because that's what the formula says. X equals. Do you see that? And then there's something over something. I know that much. There. I've done half of it. Well, I haven't done half, but got you start. Okay? Yeah? Well, I was just... And then you're about to say, trying to be one of those people who like goes to the movie and tells how it ends, aren't yeah, you? I yeah, am. you are. Contain it. <laughs> All right, Bye. you did, you did, you stopped yourself. Yeah. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Okay, negative b. So it's negative a negative six. What happens? Positive, positive six. <laughs> I really wanted to tell you that, just so you know. Okay. Okay, good job. So it's minus a minus six, so it actually becomes positive six, correct? Because it would be minus a minus six, like that, wouldn't it? That's just six. Plus or minus the square root sign. Now it's b squared. When you sub in for anything, you're going to put it in brackets, okay? So we're going to go negative six squared in brackets. Do you see how I have it in brackets? You need it in brackets in order to type into your calculator and it give you a positive sign. Then minus 4. A is what? 1. C is what? Negative 10. See, I'm just filling them in for what letters they are. A, C, 2. And then A is what? 1. Does everyone follow what I just did? I literally just put the numbers in for the letters. Do we follow? Yeah? Okay. Your next step is you're going to type everything under this square root into your calculator. Not with the square root, just what's underneath the square root. So don't go square root. Mm -mm. You're not pushing the square root button at all. No square root button. You're typing bracket, negative 6, bracket. Square, minus 4, bracket 1, bracket negative 10. You're literally typing this bo that's what's underneath. So in your calculator right now, you're typing bracket squared minus 4, bracket 1, bracket negative 10, and you're giving me an answer. Hmm? Yep. You should get positive 76 if you typed it in right. You are not typing in the square root button. Do you see that? I did not type in the square root button. I didn't type in anything. I actually just made him do it. Uh, but it's going to be 36 plus 40, which is 76. Right? So you could just do it in your head, too. This is positive 36. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 10 is positive 40. 36 and 40 is 76. We agree? Is everyone following me to that point? I didn't type in the square root sign. We agree? Okay. 
So we're going to get x equals 6 plus or minus root 76 over 2. We've almost completely done all the hard parts of this. What do I have to do with that 76? Reduce it if I can. Does any of those perfect squares work into it? I don't know. 76 divided by 4. 76 divided by 9. 76 divided by 16. 76 divided by 25. I'm getting a little ridiculous. It's 76 divided by 36. And I see if any of them go in without a decimal. So I'm going to do this off to the side. I'm not even going to fill it in there. I'm going to go root 76. Does it break down into anything? Nineteen and four. So we don't want the thirty-eight and two because neither of those are perfect squares, right? But we do want the four and nineteen because that is a perfect square, right? So we can break this down into four and nineteen. The four comes out and it becomes a two. So we get two root nineteen. And I always go and do this off to the side. Do you see how I just broke down root 76 into 2 root 19? Yeah? We agree? So now I can go back to my equation. And I can go, bring it up here. And I can go x equals 6 plus or minus, instead of root 76, I'm going to write 2 root 19 over 2. Do you follow me to this point? What I did? Now it's a three for one special. This is where people will do everything here and then they destroy it at the end. It's just the saddest thing. Three for one special. Ready? Paying attention? If it can come out of this number, this number, and this number, it can come out. If it can come out of two of them and not all three, you're done. You box it, you move on. If I can take a number out of all three of these, I do. If I can't, I'm done. Box. So many of you will like reduce things that cannot be reduced. Can I take something out of six, two, and two? Yes. What can I take out? A two. So I'm not done. Yet. So if I take a two out of six, I'm left with a three. 2 divided by 2, I'm left with a 1. 2 divided by 2, I'm left with a 1. Do I have to write the 1 if it's in the denominator? Like 6 is 6 over 1. Do I have to write the 1? No. Only, if and only if the denominator completely cancels off and it's a 1, can you drop it. If it's like a 2 or a 4, you have to keep it. So now we're going to go x equals 3 plus or minus 1 root 19. Do I need to have the 1 in front of the root? They could give me the answer like this. 3 plus root 19. Not plus or minus, sorry. I'm going to see. Yep. You can go. I'm just trying to fight my seat. It's on. Okay. I actually have two x-intercepts here. How? The plus or minus. This actually splits into two x-intercepts. x equals 3 plus root 19. And x equals 3 minus root 19. Okay. Let's check it. I want you to check it. You're going to type into your calculator the equation. Because these are just x-intercepts, aren't they? In a fancy form. So you're going to type into your y1, x squared minus 6x minus 10. So am I, but I have to get mine up. So you're going to type yours in. So we're going to go y equals x squared minus 6x minus 10, which I couldn't factor because there's nothing that multiplies to give me negative 10 and adds to give me negative 6. Nothing in the world. Okay, then I'm going to go zoom 6 because I want my standard window because it wasn't standard. So I know it goes lower. If I want to see the whole thing, I have to make my y minimum lower, right? 
if I want to see it. I could do it without this, but I'm going to anyways. So I'm going to make my y minimum negative 30 and see if I can see it. Okay. What am I trying to find when I use quadratic formula? X-intercepts. That's what it finds. It finds the x-intercepts. So we're going to go second trace number two. Then I'm going to go left bound, enter, right bound, enter, enter. Ah, I get negative 1.358899. Is that an exact value? No, it's a decimal. But I'm going to do this. Watch me. I'm going to go second mode to get out of here, and then I'm going to go X, enter, so that I have the answer on my screen. So I go second mode to get out of the graph. And then I go X, enter, so I at least have the answer there. Because when I go to find the next intercept, I won't have that answer anymore, will I? So I just wanted to get it onto my screen. Now I want to find the next one. So I go second, trace, number two. And now I need to be the left bound of the other one. So i got to go for a little ride here. Come on. This is painful. Okay, I'm on the left of it, enter. Right of it, enter, enter. And now I get 7.3588, blah, 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 right? So I go second, mode, X, enter. There, I have my two answers. Do I not? Now, these are not exact values. Exact values is actually the answer I have here. Let me see if let's move it. So if you look here, 3 plus root 19, 3 minus root 19, those are exact values. So if I ask for exact values, you cannot turn it to a decimal. But I want to check it. So I can put my two answers in and see if they match the decimals, correct? So what are my two answers? 3 plus square root 19. Aha! It matches 1. And then my other answer is 3 minus square root 19. Aha! It matches the other. I know I'm right. So I can still check with my calculator, can't I? But do I want you to give me decimal answers if I ask for exact? Nope. If I ask for exact answers, you box this, and you're like, see ya, I'm done. That's exact values. So the only time you turn it into a decimal is if I ask for it like to the nearest hundredth or something like that. But most, more often than not, you'll do exact values. And we have to be able to turn these into exact values. So we're going to flip to the next page, or actually we're going to look at that page, but can you grab an extra paper because those little boxes aren't big enough, unless you're a squisher. Then you can squish, but they're not very big. So we're going to look at the first one. I can squish it in here. You can squish it if you'd really like to. If this was my own notes, it would drive me crazy squishing it, so it's up to you. So in order to use the quadratic formula... I need to have it equal to 0, and then I need to have it in the form x squared x number, correct? Because what's in front of my x squared, which is 1 again, is what value? A. A. And then what's in front of my x is? Woodpeckers. That's not a joke. Uh, what's in front of my x is? B. And then what's at the back is C. That is a woodpecker, that noise. In my wall. Uh, it's between the outer wall and the inner wall, so it can't get into my room. But its family lives right above my window. Five generations. What is that? A woodpecker. Okay. Wait, actually? I am not joking. Are you sure it's not the students upstairs? There is no upstairs. Oh, yeah. And it's 100% a woodpecker. Yep. Uh, so approximately two years ago, that sound was constant till it broke its way all the way through my wall. Then it stopped. But it did that for an entire year. It was like having construction right next door to you. That is a woodpecker. Can you imagine that that happened all day long? I was not a happy camper. It's like having construction. I don't know, it's a whole family. At this time, it's probably fifth generation. It's got great-grandma, grandma. Oh, we just need one name. Then we can just Samuel. Samuel. 
No joke, that's what fact you want to watch. Okay. All right. So we have x equals negative b. So it's minus a minus 10. So what's it going to be? 10. What happens if our b was actually positive? Then it would be negative 10, right? That's the only difference. Then we get plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 10 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 23, the entire numerator over 2 times 1. Now that's real construction. What the heck is going on? <laughs> x equals 10. Plus or minus. Awesome. Uh, so type that into your calculator. You should get a 98. Oh no, it's 100 minus 92. You should get 8. Type it in. You should get 8 when you type what's under the radical. Not the radical. We do not put the radical in. People will call me over and they're like, left. And then they show it to me and it has the radical on it. I'm like, girl, please, no radical. Type in everything underneath without the radical side. If you're pressing second rat, stop. Okay? Now I hear a heartbeat. Edgar Allan Poe. You know, that beating in the floor? Yeah. yeah. Have you never heard about that one? The poem? Where he's like under the floorboards and speak. I feel like right now. Okay. Did you get eight? Over two. If you didn't get eight, you're typing it in wrong. Make sure you ask. So, can I reduce root eight? I do it off to the side. What can I break it down into? Yeah, because you can break eight down into four and two. We have to try and take it out of the second column. So, we can break it down into four and two. The 4 comes out and it's a 2. So we get 2 root 2. So now I can go in and replace the 8. So I get x equals 10 plus or minus 2 root 2 over 2. Now remember, it's a 3 for 1 special, correct? So it's this one, this number in front, and this one. Nothing to do with what's under the radical. Do not ever cross off there unless you're taking out a perfect square. Stop the madness. So, what can I take out of 10, 2, and 2? Two? 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. The 1's here I don't have to write. So it's 5 plus or minus root 2. So I get x equals 5 plus root 2. And x equals 5 minus root 2. If I wanted to show it as an x-intercept, I would get 5 plus root 2 comma 0 and 5 minus root 2 comma 0. You guys are trying to sound like a woodpecker? It's not working. All right. We're going to go down to this one. I want you to try this one. Try it out. We have to have it equal to zero, which we do. Our a is two, our b is three, our c is negative one. Now the formula is x equals negative b. And up until this one, we did minus a minus, which made it a plus, correct? But this one isn't a minus. So it's going to stay negative b, which is three, plus or minus. The square root of b squared, which is 3 squared, minus 4 times a times c, the entire numerator over 2 times 2. So we get x equals negative 3 plus or minus shh, 9 plus 8 is 17 over 4. Now you should throw a little party when this happens. Because 17 is a prime number, which means it cannot be broken down into anything. You're done. Just box that baby. Or we can write in two answers. Negative 3 plus root 17 over 4, comma 0. 
negative 3 and minus root 17 all over 4 from the 0. Yeah? So much fun. I know. You're welcome. You're all invited to this fun. It's on page. Don't worry, miss now. Page 254. <laughs> 